You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. E100 Reading 2 What's the big deal in Genesis 3? Yeah, the second reading is the third chapter of Genesis. And this third chapter completes and makes sense of chapter 2. You can't really understand what's going on in chapter 2 until you've read chapter 3. And then you can read back into chapter 2 so much of what you missed if you didn't know chapter 3. The Bible is often like that. It's a book that's intended to be re-read, not just read, but to be being read for the umpteenth time. And of course, chapters 1, 2 and 3 together are the foundation upon which the rest of the Bible makes sense. So chapter 3 is really important. It's not just the chapter that makes sense of chapter 2, but with chapter 2 and chapter 1, they are the three chapters that make sense of the whole book. Everything else you read in the Bible, you read in the light of what you've heard in these three chapters. Yeah, I know. Christian readings of this chapter very often suggest that it's all about sex. Of course, they're not really Christian readings, they're just readings by Christians. Looking at what the text itself says, it's quite clear, and the notes rightly point out that the sin is not sex. Sex is implicitly part of the blessing of creation. Look in chapter 1. Be fruitful and multiply. Right there, as soon as the human beings are made, in the image of God. And in chapter 2. Leave father and mother, and they become one flesh. 2.24 Sex, you see, is part of the blessing of creation. And there's no hint in chapter 3 that the problem is sex. But other notes equally right when they say that the sin in chapter 3 is questioning and disobedience. They point to Genesis 3.1 where the serpent asks the crafty question Did God say? Is it sin to question what God has said? And in verse 6 disobedience because in verse 6 quite clearly they disobey the command in 2.17. But is this really what the sin in chapter 3 is all about? Or is the sin deeper? Look at verse 5. God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Is the real sin here in chapter 3 to put ourselves in the place of God? Because once we do, disobedience is easy. But putting ourselves in the place of God is also the root of the lust for power. And then, the punishment indeed fits the crime. If the crime is not merely disobeying a command not to eat fruit, and admittedly the punishment of making work hard would fit with that, but if it's not merely that, but is also and deeper the sin of seeking to take God's place to displace God then not only does work become toil the exact opposite of what happens when God finishes creation Genesis 2 2 on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done by contrast in Genesis chapter 3 work becomes toil but also 316. Relationships are broken by the lust for power and dominance. I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Work becomes toil. But your desire shall be for your husband, but he will rule over you. Desire and dominance is the result of the desire to be like God, of the lust for power. You see, this comes full circle in the Bible when we get finally towards the end of the story in Philippians chapter 2 where we hear at last of the one who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but emptied himself taking the form of a slave is it perhaps that in Genesis chapter 3 the deepest sin is the sin of seeking to take God's place, to rule ourselves, 
and of course if we rule ourselves to rule others yeah i know you and i aren't like that are we we don't try to impose our will upon others not half it's time to pray see you tomorrow bye